for example, 6, 6 choose 2. Okay, let's, let's make it 6 choose 4. How do we evaluate this without a calculator? The formula is given to you. It is on page 87. Page 87. This can be written as 6 choose 4 like this. They are the same. Whichever way you write it will be okay. So, here we know that it is going to end up as a fraction. How many terms are there in the denominator? Four, four. four terms. What, does the, what is the first term? Four, four then times? Three. three times? Two times? One. one. What about the numerator? How many terms are there? Four. four. What does it start with? Six. Six. Five. Four. Three. Now, this is how you evaluate it without using a calculator. Okay, so we do the cancellation. Four and four, three and three, two and six. So the answer will be? 15. Okay? Now, um, we also learned that 1 plus b to the power of n, where n can be a number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 10, whatever it is. Positive integers only. Uh. And this b over here is an unknown. b could be x, it could be x squared, it could be um, negative x, negative y, um, negative y squared, 3 over 2 x, so on and so forth. So many possibilities for, for b. Okay? But when we expand it, it will look like a certain form. First, how many choose what? The very first term. We know it is 1, okay? We know it's 1. But how do we write it in terms of something choose something? n choose? Are you sure? Ah, we start with 0. n choose 0. Because n choose 1 will be? n. n choose 1 will be n. Okay, there are n number of people here. I want you to choose one person. How many ways are there of doing it? N ways. Well, if I want, uh, I've got n people here. I want you to choose zero people. So how many ways are there of doing it? I want you to choose zero people. There's only one way to choose zero, right? Uh, so there's one. Uh, so this gives us one. Okay, this is my first term with a b to the power of zero, which is actually one. I, in, I deliberately wrote it this way. Whereas your textbook on page 86 did not have b to the power of 0 because I want to show you the complete picture. Okay? So the second term, what do we have? n choose 1. b to the power of 1. Uh, in your textbook, they didn't write b to the power of 1 la, because it is understood. But I just show it to you to complete it. Next term, n choose 2. b to the power of 2. Plus dot dot dot. Plus. Okay, now I want the general term. Generally, what does it look like? N choose R. Okay. And B to the power of R. Look at the, look at the pattern. Alright. So this N choose R. And this is somewhere in the middle. Then plus dot dot dot. Plus what is the last term? N choose N. B to the power of N. How many terms are there all together? Are you sure N terms? There are n plus 1 terms. What is the first term? Okay, that is the first term. Second term will be n choose 1, b power 1, right? Okay, so we also assign them names. This is term number 1, term number 2, term number 3. Look at the, one, the red color 1, 2, and 3. Is there a relationship with the yellow highlighted numbers? What is the relationship? plus 1. So can you tell me what is this term equal to? R plus, one. R plus 1. And we call this the general term. Over here. And my last term will be term number? N plus 1. N plus one. So how do we use the general term? Let's say I want the term number Four, four, okay, let's just choose something that is uh, already in, the, in, in this expansion. I want term number 1. What is the value of R? Zero. All of you need to be aware of this, no? Term number 1. What is the value of R? Because this is equal to term number 0 plus 1, right? The reason I'm writing it this way is to show you that this part over here, Looks like this. R plus 1. So R must be 0. Okay? 
So now I'm ready to continue. The when r equals to zero, I get my first term. And the general term looks like this. And choose r. What is the value of r again? Zero. zero. Then b to the power of zero. zero, according to this, right? Then do you see that this is exactly the same as this? That is how you use the general term. If I want term number two, it will be t one plus one. Basically, right? From here, I want you to be able to tell that r equals to 0, r equals to 1. When I want term number 2, r equals to 1. When I want r equals to 1, I'm referring to term number 2. Okay? So this gives me n choose how many? n choose how many? n choose 1. n choose 1. b to the power of 1. Okay, let's say I want... Um, the third term huh? So when I want my third term What is the value of R? So I want term number 3 That tells me that R equals to 2 So term number 3 equals to N choose 2, two. B to the power of 2 Can? So, yes uh, We always change the Do you mean this one over here? Yeah. Ah, that will be covered in 3.3, .3, tomorrow's lesson. Instead of one, you'll get something else. You'll have A. Okay? So what we have learned so far is quite uh, simple. Basically, it's all a pattern because this is very conveniently one. Tomorrow, we'll see what happens when it is A. Yes? So, do we always do this first then? We always say, uh, let B be uh, what, what uh, the term B. No, no, we don't have to. You can directly replace b with whatever it is. Maybe it is x, maybe it is x squared, negative x, negative y, so on and so forth. So, so how does the format look like? If you just Okay, for example, let's look at work example number 5. So now we are at page 89. In the expansion of 1 plus kx to the power of 8, okay, we are gonna we have this binomial over here which you can choose to expand, you can choose not to expand. I want you to compare with earlier on what we had, which was 1 plus b to the power of n. Do you see the similarities? Do you see the similarities between the blue and the black one? Okay, what is the value of b in this case? kx. What is the value of n in this case? 8. Are you familiar with how to expand the 1 in blue? Yes, right? So, every time you see the b, you change it to kx. Every time you see n, you change it to 8. Okay? So, let's see what else the question says. Um, k is more than 0. And coefficient of x squared. Oh, sorry, x cubed is 4 times coefficient of x squared. Find k. Let's see how we tackle this question. Huh? What do you think is a possible approach to solving this? Possible. I'm not saying that it's the best way or whatever. Expand, okay. Uh, you realize that if you expand this, you will get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 terms, right? And out of which, there will be an x... Okay, this will be an x0 term. This will be x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, x7, and x8 term, right? If you manage to expand it out, this is what you will get. Just that I don't know what the coefficients are. I mean, you can find out. And they're all added together, correct? Is this what happens? Yes, okay. Now they say that the coefficient of x cubed, so I need to identify, oh, this is my x cubed term. It has a certain coefficient which I have not evaluated yet. Okay, and then uh, it is 4 times the coefficient of x squared. So these two coefficients are different. One is 4 times the other. And you are told to find k. Will this method work? Will this method work? So let's say we, without working it out, let's say um, the coefficient of x cubed is, for example, um, k plus 1. For example, uh, 
Then the coefficient of x squared is, for example, um, k squared. Okay, let's simplify it. Um, k minus 1. Okay. Let's say these are the two coefficients. Can you work out k? Yes, yes right? Because all you need to do is to say, to say that, oh, coefficient of x cubed, which is k plus 1, equals to 4 times the coefficient of x squared, which is k minus 1. And then you can solve for k, isn't it? Yeah. Right? So this method will work. But do you see that it is going to be very tedious because there's a lot of information that we don't need. For example, what don't we need if we were to expand this? Yeah, all these, all these are rubbish. They, I mean, they're not rubbish, but they are irrelevant, right? Yes? Wait, wait oh, what's your question? Okay. How do you intend to use a calculator to find an x cubed term? Okay, so this is what he's suggesting. Huh? 8 choose 3, then? Or 8 choose 2. Huh? Okay, then? So which one do we do first? Uh, I cannot do both at the same time, I want one only. So he chose two first. And then what do I write next? What do I write next? Twenty where the twenty eight came come from? No, I I want what are you trying to do over here? So, so what? What do you mean cannot? Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Let, me, let me attempt to help you. Okay, you still want to try again. Huh? 8, choose 2, and then bracket the kx, and then power 2. What is this supposed to be? I hope all of you are thinking about what he's doing. What is this supposed to be? This is not a general term. Do you all agree? Yes. Is this term number 3? Yes. Yes, right, because we said that the general term TR plus 1 is supposed to be N choose R with B to the power of R. In this case, in this case, my B is equal to KX. Okay, B is KX. My N is equal to 8. N is equal to 8 over here. Then I've got my R equals to 2. R equals to 2. R equals to 2 over here. So here will be 2 plus 1, which is 3. This is the third term. Notice that the third term resulted in x to the power of? Ah, third term resulted in x to the power of 2. Ah, not third term, then x to the power of 3, okay? So the third term resulted in x to the power of 2. And this allows me to get the Term with the x square immediately, right? Or you need to use your calculator for this, lah. Okay, h two. How much is that? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Can you can you evaluate this? Yeah. This will be k square, x square, right? Where is my coefficient of x square? Twenty-eight k square. Okay, I'm gonna highlight the coefficient of x square. What is the information that they gave you about this coefficient of x square? No, coefficient of x cubed is 4 times that of x squared, right? Okay, so do you see how we can simplify, we can remove a lot of working that is not important to us? Can you see that? So we don't need all this, right? And we don't need to expand it out. Wow, do your rainbow, expand, expand, expand. I don't need to binomial the whole thing also. I just need to zoom in on which two terms? Term? Term 3 and term 4. How do I decide which term I want? Ah, power plus one. We need to go back to our general term. So, yes, you have the correct approach. This is the approach to solving it. We will need to write down T R plus one, the general term. Equals to, in this case, will be 8 choose R with KX to the power of R. All of you must be able to write this down. Write it down in your textbook, work example five. They did not have this exactly. I want you to write it down. TR plus 1 in this case will be 8 choose R with KX to the power of R. Yes. Uh, if it is useful, then write it down. 
If you're going to use it, then I expect this to be written out. This is the general term specific to this question. But can you like, for example, you, since this question is equal, right? Uh. You can just write T3 and then T3. You can, if you, are, if you have the um, format for the general term in your mind already. Okay. Okay? But I don't, uh, so I write it down. And it's easy to substitute, right? Okay, which are the x terms that are of importance to this question? 3. x to the power of what? 3. 3. As well as x to the power of? 2. 2. Okay, look at the general term. Every single term in the expression will have this form. This form over here. It will be a number. This portion over here is just a number. Then over here will be expanded into k to the power r, x to the power r, right? So this can be written as number times k to the power r times x to the power r. Where is my coefficient? It will be this, correct? And then I have a x to the power of r. Now, I want x to the power of 3. Can you tell me the value of r? Yes. What is it? 3. 3, la, because here I have x to the power of r, right? Okay, so I don't think you require this on the screen. So since I want x to the power of 3, this tells me that when r equals to 3, this is what I want, huh? Okay, hang on. Okay, when r equals to 3, this is when I will get my x cubed. So, t3 plus 1 equals to, do the substitution, 8, choose how many? 3. 3. Kx to the power of 3. three. Okay, so, this tells me that term number 4 equals to 8 choose 3. It's just a number. Use your calculator to help you. 8 choose 3. 56. K to the power of 3. X to the power of 3. Correct? Now, obviously, I need another term. This time, I want x to the power of 2. What will the r value be? 3. When r equals to 2. Because now, the only way to get x squared from my general term is when r equals to 2. So, when r equals to 2, term number 2 plus 1 equals to 8 choose 2 kx to the power of 2, which is term number 3. Equals to h choose 2 is, I think they did it just now, 28. k square x square. Okay? So without, without evaluating everything, I have the two pieces of information required to solve it. So they also said that the coefficient of x cubed is 4 times the coefficient of x square. This is where you need to interpret your term number 4 and term number 3. Form an equation. That will give you one mark. Okay, so can you form the equation? Yes. Okay, what is it? What should I write? Agree? All agree? Yeah, wrong. Why wrong? All of you look at the screen and tell me what's wrong. Yeah, they're asking for coefficient only. Yeah? If you have this, how many unknowns are there? Two. Can solve them. Not possible to solve because it is the wrong equation to begin with. They are saying the coefficient of x cubed, which is this part. This is the coefficient of x cubed, is four times. Okay, so this is the coefficient of x cubed is four times the coefficient of x squared. This is the coefficient of x squared. With this, now you can solve. Okay, so uh, evaluate them. Fifty-six k cubed equals to four times twenty-eight. Giving me 1, 1, 2, k square. What should I do on both sides? Divide by? Are you sure divide by k? Okay, why, why do I want to divide by k? So? Divide by k square. Can I divide by k square? Can or cannot? Okay, who say can? Raise your hand. And give me a reason why I can. 
Okay, who, who are those who think that you cannot divide by k? Okay, why cannot divide by k? So what if k is negative? Okay, hang on. So what if k is negative? I also can divide by negative number. Right? So can divide by k or not? Okay, listen. The only reason that we cannot divide by k is if we are dividing by negative Why cannot divide by negative number? When you when you when k equals zero, then you cannot divide by k, right? Because you cannot divide by zero. But in this question, what did they say about k? Ah, uh? uh, k is more than zero. So can divide by k or not? Can. But I prefer to um, factorize. Yes, I will factorize it. Be besides dividing by k or factorizing k or k square, what else can we divide by? 56. Why not we divide by 56? We get k cubed equals to 2k squared, isn't it? So now I move everything to one side. k cubed minus 2k squared equals to 0. I factorize out k squared. I get k minus 2 equals to 0. Right? This is how you should be doing it. Huh? If the question did not say that k equals to 0. If the question did not say k equals to 0, you must do this. Okay? So next, we get k equals to 0 and we reject or k equals to 2. The reason we reject is because the question already said k is greater than 0. Okay? Yes? What method? You mean on this side? If the question allows you to do it, then do it. Lah. Okay? Can follow? Why don't you try practice now 5? Very similar question. Just take 5 minutes for it. It's very important in AMATS. Here in uh, practice now 5, you are given 1 plus ax to the power of 5, and they are telling you that the coefficient x is 5, blah, 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 blah. And I know that most of you wanted to write down the general term because you realize that it is very helpful, right? General term allows me to zoom in to any particular term I like. So I saw this. Um, and choose r ax to the power of r, okay, where n is equal to 5. What do you think of this? Right or wrong? Uh, Why wrong? Uh, this is only a general term. How can your expansion result in only one term? This is the general term. It is found in in the middle. Or rather, it can be the first, it can be the last also. So you must be very careful with what you are writing. If you want to write the general term, then you write down the general term. TR plus 1 equals to 5 choose r ax to the power of r okay so which term are we interested in i want the x power 5 term okay so from here x power 5 term i want the value of r always find the value of r so what is the value of r so this is in my mind huh? let me just use red for it i want x power 5 so this tells me that r will be equals to okay so in black i'll write out r equals to five therefore t five plus one which is the sixth term the sixth term will contain my x power five term so five choose five which i know will be one yes a x to the power of five equals to a power five x power five this is my term containing x power 5. Now, I want as well...